This hat design came about due to a mistake I made while experimenting with my new bulky Corona machine. And actually it came out pretty cute, so I thought I would share it with you. It may be knitted on any bulky machine, whether a completely manual one, punch card one, or electronic. And as we go along, I'll explain how to get the effects we have on any of those machines. This is a child-sized hat at 18 inches in circumference and 7 inches in height. The pattern is for DK weight yarn, and one of the things I was wanting to experiment with while working on this hat was how was that going to perform on the Corona Bulky machine. In fact, it performed very well. The stockinette portions are mostly stitch size 3. I found I needed to go two clicks larger for the tuck. Based on other comparisons, I think you're going to get very similar stitch sizes on any brand of bulky, and most likely at stitch size 5-ish, you can make this on the mid-gauge machine also. In the very basic tuck stitch we're going to use, I get 4.3 stitches per inch and 10 rows per inch, which is denser than I predicted it was going to come out, and that's how I ended up with an accidental hat pattern. I did that unthinkable thing and failed to swatch, as I always tell you not to fail to do, because I was experimenting, so I ended up having to improvise and add a second brim. Because of all of this, the combination of two brims being an extended piece of two-layer knitting, followed by tuck stitch, which is by nature a thicker, warmer fabric than stockinette, this should be a very warm hat. Work across a span of 80 needles and cast on using any method you like that will allow you to hang the work in a few minutes. At about stitch size 3, knit 20 rows. Lift the cast on edge and hang it on the working needles. Corona knitters, sometimes your first few rows, the end stitches don't like to knit off very well. A claw weight can be a big help here. After hanging the cast on, knit two plain stockinette rows. Follow them with 30 rows of tuck stitch. The tuck stitch we want to use is for every other needle to hold its loops and not knit off for one row, and then for every needle to knit on the next row. Most Japanese machines have a setting that will allow this to happen. On the Corona, it's number one on each side of the carriage. If selected, when you pull needles forward, they will catch loops of yarn but they will not knit. That creates tuck stitch. Switching to position two causes them to knit off normally. So that's what we'll do for the second row of our two row series. It's the same on Singer and Studio machines. On Brothers, it's N versus H. N is for normal knitting, H is for hold. So we create loops, manual tuck stitch by going to H. And cancels it, and the row will knit back every needle. Of course, on my Brother 260, which I just showed you, I could punch a punch card, and it would look like this. First row, every filled-in dot is a punched-out hole. X's represent positions that could be punched out but are not. Second row, every single position is punched out. That will cause every single needle to knit. So select every other needle, knit across, a tuck row forms, make sure you're set so as to knit back, a knit row forms. On this machine and on singers, you can leave the left lever set to tuck and the right lever set to knit back. I am selecting the same exact needles every single time. You would get a different pattern if you alternated sets of needles. And you might or might not get the same gauge. So for your first try, I'd go with this setup. If you would like to make this hat without needing to add a second brim, you could do so by knitting 44 or 46 tuck rows rather than 30. After the 30 tuck rows, stop tucking. Just knit 10 plain stockinette rows. Leave enough yarn tail to work with thread it into a yarn needle or a double eye needle and run that needle through every stitch in order starting at the end where the tail began. Remove the fabric from the machine. 
And here you can see the varying characters of the fabric and the thickness of the tuck section. This is also where I discovered my miscalculation and started pondering what I could do to make the hat longer. I decided to make a second brim in a second color using a multi-prong tool to push through the bottom fold of the present brim and hang it on the same needles. Now we'll knit a second brim right onto the first. For situations like this, I always bring the needles forward and knit back from old because it takes some of the stress off of the carriage and also hanging a little bit of weight is likely to assist. That knitted off with no problems using um, three plus two clicks and then I gradually reduced to down to three and completed the hem at the original stockinette stitch size of three. So 20 rows for the second hem minus the pink hem and then it's very easy to see what to hang. Pick up all of those first little loops contrasting against the original hem and hang them. A couple of times I accidentally caught part of a red stitch and I purposely redid it and released it because I think that's going to make it too stiff. For the bind off that I prefer to use here, I'm going to want the carriage on the left. So I'm going to ask the carriage to knit me one more row, which does show up on the inside of the hat, does no harm whatsoever. Knit across and now I'm going to do the manual version of the transfer bind off, which is my favorite for this particular machine. Now we'll add a little bow. To create the receiver for the bow, hang the lower edge of the newest hem on six needles, just as it falls. And for the bow, I've turned the stitch size up quite a lot. I want the fabric to be soft. So I'm at stitch size six, going to knit eight bow rows. Snip the yarn, thread the tail into a needle, and gather off those stitches. Now fold the newly created piece of bow up so that it touches the top of the brim, the second brim that is, and stitch it into place. Now for the bow itself, you may improvise and change the size of it if you want to, but I went with 12 stitches and 24 rows at the loose stitch size of six, and then bound off. Considering what I later decided to do, you could actually gather off if you wanted to. We've just created a stockinette strip, so slide that through the flap that we just created a few minutes ago, and you could stitch it in place right there, and it would be a big bow. After some playing around with it, I decided to use the yarn tails to gather the ends in, tied those two yarn tails together, then stitched them through the fabric, right? so they really can't budge, and then the yarn tail is woven in between the two layers of the second hem. All that remains to do is seam the two edges of the work together. That will form a seam down the center back of the hat and gather in the top of the crown tightly and secure it. The best position for the bow is one quarter to one third of the way around the hat fabric from one edge.